Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be simplifying a complex expression. It's not too complex, it's not bad. We have 1 plus cosine theta plus i sine theta divided by 1 plus cosine theta minus i sine theta. Notice that the sign changes between the real parts and the imaginary parts. Did I say real and imaginary? Is this a complex number? Yes, it is. But notice that we take the cosine theta plus i sine theta and we just add 1 to it. And then we take its conjugate and do the same thing. So the theta is going to change. Let's see how that does. So to be able to simplify this expression, I'm going to take advantage of half angle or double angle formulas, however you want to look at it. Here's what I'm talking about. Cosine of 2 theta, right? Or I should probably not use theta. How about cosine of 2 alpha? That can be written as in three ways, right? 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 and 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So, I mean alpha. So how do you, which one are we going to use? Let's take a look. We have 1 plus cosine theta, but how am I going to use it on theta? Well, easy. Set 2 alpha equal to theta, you get alpha equals theta over 2. That's what I mean by half double angle thing. So we can basically write this as cosine theta equals 2 cosine squared theta over 2 minus 1. And this is the one that I'm going to use because there's a positive one and I would like to cancel that out. So let's go ahead and replace cosine theta with this. 2 cosine squared theta over 2 minus 1. That's going to give us 1 plus 2 cosine squared theta over 2 minus 1. And remember, that's just the 1 plus cosine theta part. And then we have the plus i sine theta. What am I going to do with sine theta though, right? For sine theta, I have another trick, which is again the double angle formula. And that double angle formula is as follows. Remember, sine 2 alpha, it's 2 sine alpha cosine alpha. Replace alpha with theta over 2. You're going to get sine theta is 2 sine theta over 2 times cosine theta over 2. Make sense? That's what we're going to plug in and everything will be awesome. Let's do it. And of course we have to do it twice, right, for the denominator as well. The only difference, by the way, is just the minus sign before the i. So it's going to be exact same thing here. Exact same thing. Minus i times, times 2 sine theta over 2 times cosine theta over 2. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and clear this area up and we will go ahead and simplify this now. Now, what do we have? We have the plus minus 1. So let's go ahead and cancel that out. 1 minus 1 is 0. And now we end up with something nice. And notice that cosine theta over 2 is a common factor, right? So we can go ahead and factor that out. Not only that, but 2 is also a common factor. So let's go ahead and take those out. 2 cosine theta over 2. If you take it out, you're going to get cosine theta over 2 inside plus i times sine theta over 2. And isn't that awesome? And at the bottom, you get 2 cosine theta over 2 multiplied by, again, cosine theta over 2 minus i times sine theta over 2. And this is just amazing, isn't it? Because it cancels out, but not only that, we also get a really nice simple expression. How do you simplify this? These, this is kind of like the quotient of two complex numbers, isn't it? So how do you divide complex numbers? You multiply by the conjugate. So that's one way to look at it. Let's go ahead and do it. So we get cosine theta over 2 plus i sine theta over 2 divided by cosine theta over 2 minus i sine theta over 2. And then multiply that by conjugates, cosine theta over 2 plus i sine theta over 2. That comes from the denominator, obviously, right? We have to use the, co um, what is that called? Conjugate of the denominator. And of course, their product is going to be the uh, sum of two squares, a squared plus b squared. And this is just going to be a perfect square. So let's go ahead and square cosine 
theta over 2 plus i sine theta over 2 in the numerator. And denominator is just going to be cosine squared theta over 2 plus sine squared theta over 2. But wait a minute. Isn't sine squared plus cosine squared equal to 1? Yes, it is. So we don't have to worry about this. This is just equal to 1. And the answer is the numerator. But how do you square this? Um, let's just square it. Cosine squared theta over 2 plus 2 cosine theta over 2 times i sine theta over 2 plus sine squared i squared sine squared theta over 2. Remember, I've always told you i squared is negative 1, so we get a minus sign there. And then cosine squared theta over 2 minus sine squared theta over 2. What does that remind you? One formula we didn't talk about double angle for cosine. So this gives you cosine of 2 times theta over 2, which is cosine theta. And this is the formula for sine 2 alpha, but alpha is theta over 2, so it's going to become i times sine theta. Wow, that's crazy. We got a complex number in the simplest form. How is that possible, right? How did we get from this quotient to something as simple as this one. So let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative approach to simplify this half angle thing. Okay? And then that will conclude our video. So we were simplifying cosine theta over 2 plus i sine theta over 2 and that is divided by cosine theta over 2 minus i sine theta over 2. And by the way, before we start simplifying this, I just want to say something and you pro probably noticed. Instead of squaring and multiplying by conjugates, I could also use the Moivre's theorem. I can never say the French version. Anyways, so here's what we can do. When you divide a complex number by another complex number, you subtract the arguments. Is, it, is that really true? Yes. So if you're dividing, think about it. This is e to the power i theta over 2 and this is e to the power negative i theta over 2. Why did I put a negative sign there? Because you can basically write this as cosine of negative theta over 2 plus i sine negative theta over 2. And the reason? Sine is odd, cosine is even. So now look at that. You can subtract the exponents. That's going to give you e to the power i theta, which is the answer. And that is equivalent to this, isn't it? Remember Euler's formula? That's what we get by using Euler's formula. That's why Euler's formula is really awesome. You can basically write a complex number in the most compact form. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.